This week's constellations are Andromeda, Pegasus, Triangulum, and Aries. These are good fall and winter constellations for us as far north of the equator as we are. Here's a shot of the part of the sky that Pegasus is in. These constellations span a fairly large area, so I can't fit them all onto one screen, but this shows Pegasus anyway. Here's the outline of Pegasus, and right now it's an upside down front end of a horse. So this doesn't show the entire horse, actually. The dashed lines there actually include a star that belongs to Andromeda, so Pegasus doesn't quite have half a horse there. Uh, the main feature of Pegasus is that big rectangle there, the square, usually called the Great Square of Pegasus. And there are some horsey names in Pegasus. Enif, that's the nose. Markab, is the saddle of the horse. Sheet, be careful how you pronounce that one. That's the horse's shoulder. Algenib, the flank. And Alpharats over here is the navel of the mare. At one time Alpharats was in the constellation of Pegasus, but now it's just barely over the border in the constellation of Andromeda. But it's still part of the asterism that we use for Pegasus. Okay, there's that great square of Pegasus right there. There's Alpharats there, and Alpharats is actually Alpha Andromedae, and that's the asterism that we use for Andromeda. It looks like a big opening V or maybe a cornucopia below Andromeda in this picture is the most accurately named constellation in the sky triangulum and then a pretty undistinctive asterism down here this is for the constellation of Aries Andromeda again triangulum again And Aries. Also in this picture is constellation of or the asterism for Cassiopeia. And a little bit of Perseus, not very much of it here, but some of it anyway. Andromeda there. You can see the great square of Pegasus, Triangulum, Aries, and this is Pisces down here, one of the constellations of the zodiac. Faint constellation, very difficult to see unless you're under very dark skies. And up in this region of the sky, within that ellipse up there, is M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Here's a picture of it, quite photogenic. When you take long time exposures, when you actually look at this through a telescope or binoculars, pretty much all you see is just the central brightest region there. It's hard to see the outer regions. Nearby the Milky Way galaxy, about two and a half million light years distant, 
You can see it under the naked eye. Uh, it's a little difficult. You do have to be under dark skies and know where to look, but it's possible. And this was one of the first galaxies or spiral nebula that had the distance measured. This one contains quite a few more stars than the Milky Way galaxy, at least one trillion. And it's moving toward the Milky Way galaxy. They'll collide in about three and three quarter billion years. So they'll merge together. A couple of companion galaxies to the Andromeda galaxy that when you look through telescopes, they seem to be far enough away that they're not actually connected, but we don't can't see the full extent of the Andromeda galaxy with the eye. M32 and M110. There's Cassiopeia up there, great square of Pegasus, Andromeda, Triangulum. In the circle up there is a star. It has Kappa Andromedae. Kappa is another Greek letter. And about 170 light years away, so not too far. But here's something interesting about that star. Uh, this was taken by the Subaru telescope, and in the center the location of Kappa Andromedae, but when the picture was taken they put a mask over the star so the light from it wouldn't uh, overcome the dim things that they were trying to see and the object they were interested in was that thing there, something that orbits Kappa Andromedae. 52 astronomical unit orbital radius by comparison that's about a third larger than the orbit of uh, Pluto, so quite a ways away. This would be a cold object, but it's an object with 13 times the mass of Jupiter, so that's fairly massive. It's either can be thought of as a large planet or a small brown dwarf. Brown dwarf is a failed star. And this is one of the first extrasolar planets that's been directly imaged. Usually extrasolar planets are discovered by the gravitational tug that they give on their stars. And it's not usually possible to image them, but in this case it was. One other object in this area, just off of Triangulum, is M33, known as the Triangulum Galaxy. Also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, although there are several galaxies known by that name. It's a little farther away than the Andromeda Galaxy. If you consider half a million light years a little. Apparent magnitude of 5.7 Usually under dark skies, you can see up to about magnitude 6, so you could possibly see this with the naked eye. And here's kind of an odd little picture of the Triangulum Galaxy I ran across. Uh, an amateur was photographing the galaxy when an airplane happened to fly right across his field of view. You can see the tail of the airplane there. It was visible just for an instant when the strobe on the airplane happened to flash and illuminate the tail. That's it for this week's Constellations.